and um, James and John. James and John get called by Jesus. It says they're mending their nets with their father. It says they drop the nets, they leave everything and follow him. And that's the that's what the calling is. It's that the reason you are alive, the reason you were born, was to be in the image of God, to know him and to fellowship with him and walk with him. Hey everybody. Hey, uh, we're uh, really excited about today's uh, podcast. Um, we have had something on our heart for a long time. One thing that's really been impactful for all of us um, has been the subject of secret place and communion with God. And uh, we're going to dive into that today. Um, just kind of our heart in this is really we see that King Jesus shows a way mm -hmm. um, of intimacy. He opens a door for us to have communion with God through the veil, which is his flesh. And that brings transformation. And so if you're listening to this today, and uh, really the heart here is to that there is a place available, an intimacy, a connection with God that has been made available through private intimacy with the Lord that will literally transform you, right. change you into the image of Christ. And uh, our hearts today, just that for you to kind of see that, to, to uh, if we could just kind of welcome you in, uh, welcome you to this experience, uh, this uh, beautiful uh, thing that Jesus has made available. So we're going to dive into some scriptures today on Secret Place. We're going to dive into just um, what it looks like and how to and how to have intimacy with Jesus. Um, and so maybe we'll jump in. Uh, obviously, kind of the uh, first kind of go-to teaching would be out of the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would just say this, too, for, for you guys watching, that this is, this is about experiencing the Lord. Yeah. Um, this experience we see in the life of Jesus that he often went away to commune with God. And that's the heartbeat behind this, that you would experience the Father. And he made this available to us, and it became one of his key teachings. Uh, so if you've never experienced the Lord, you don't even know what secret place is, or you've, um, uh, it's kind of maybe just like a, a, a weird Christian-y, all that is is private connection and communion with God and talking to God like a friend. And in that place, you actually meet him. He actually talks back to you. That's right. um, you actually experience him and you actually uh, see him for who he is. And then therefore, it, as, as a born again believer, you get transformed into the image that you're seeing and experiencing. And so our hearts are just kind of to make that simple for you so that you can go home and, or, or, or take a walk or spend time with the Lord and know what's available. Um, but let's jump in um, just to some of the passages and lay a little bit of a scriptural foundation on kind of what we see uh, for this. Uh, somebody want to kind of jump in? Does anybody have Matthew 6 open? Um, yeah, let's just read kind of the, uh, starting with the prayer time. Yeah, go ahead. So Matthew 6, verses, we are practicing righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. When therefore you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be honored by men. Truly I say to you, they have been they have their reward in full. But when you give alms, do not know do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your alms may be in secret, and your father who sees you in secret will repay you. And when you pray, you are not to be as the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners in order to be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will, re will repay you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. You want to keep? Going? You want to stop there for a sec? Yeah. yeah, we can just kind of speak there's on. A lot go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot going on there. Um, I, I just want to kind of, real quick, kind of go over the, I guess, the simplicity of, of, of number one. I mean, maybe, maybe people don't even know what that even means. Like yeah, when we yeah, say secret yeah. place, like what does yeah. that even mean? Yeah. Um, and so, I don't know if this is a good time for me to kind of just feel. Jump in. You know, one thing that yeah, the Holy Spirit has has. I, I, well, this kind of came off the heels of of I was meeting with a brother, and. Um, you know, some of the language that you start to hear, I guess, when you when you when you disciple or when you or you're hanging out with with believers and 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 other brothers and sisters in Christ, it, you're you start to hear like a a, um, a repetitiveness in, in the language. And, yeah. and what am I saying in, in regards to the secret place? Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I noticed, one of the, the, the this is a, this is actually what was said. So, 
I don't even know if it was brought up or if, if I brought it up or if he brought it up. Somehow we ended up here, and he, and, and he said this. He said, I just haven't been there enough, and I could just feel it and hear it on his words, on his mm-hmm. that there was this guilt, mm-hmm. that yeah. there was this kind of this shame yeah. For, yeah. for not doing that. And, and I immediately just, you know, kind of to myself, even in, even in the presence of him, just kind of started praying, like, all right, Holy Spirit, like I can yeah. kind of feel that. He's kind of, you know, maybe struggling with something or, or, you know, maybe this is something that has become like a stumbling block. Yeah. And so immediately what I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me was, um, and we'll kind of get back to the scripture there, but what I, what I feel like the Holy Spirit said to me right in that moment was the secret place isn't so much a place as it is a heart posture Mm -hmm. or a mindset or this mentality towards, towards God. Right. Yeah. Um, and so what I'm saying is this, is that we, you know, Matthew 6, it says, it says, when you pray, go into your inner room, right? Yep, and yep. so I think you can see, like, do, do I think that people do that out of a, out of a, out of a, out of a, a, of a pure heart posture of like, okay, it says go into an inner room. And so what do we naturally want to do? We, we try to find this place that we can go to that, that kind of becomes that secret place, that inner room, that thing that we do in secret, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that communion that we go and just be with him. Um, what it turns into, though, is a place uh, and this stumbling block because when I, now when I don't go there, it turns into, well, I went there to be with him, but now I haven't been there, so I have this shame. Now I have to work back. I, now, now you get to a place where I don't even want to. I don't want to go there because now I got to get back in right standing before I can go be with him. Yep, yep. And that's not. That's just contradictory to what it's saying. Basically, what we're talking about in the secret place is just being in this constant awareness and, and yeah. constant communion with him. Yep. Um, and so going back to what I was saying, you start to hear that language. And, and you know, talking about this earlier, you know, um, you know, Sam actually brought up a good point. And, and really what it is is just understanding your sonship. You're, yeah, this so is who good. you are. This is something that's freely given. This is, a, this is something that is um, accessible yes. for, for you. And not, not, not something that you have to work for and not something that you're condemned or being shamed for. It's just a recognition of, of not being with him. And I think that as you mature and as you become more wise and more understanding that starts to like turn and right. now it's like i'm not shameful i just now instead of like now I'm, I'm not there's no shame there's no condemnation it's i just haven't been with him yeah i i start to feel that i'm that connection not being there um anyway i I'll, i'm gonna stop and see if anyone else has anything that they want to kind of add to that but that's just something that the holy spirit's been really putting on my heart as an encouragement to people mm. that it doesn't have to be something that you have to work for this is not something that he's not he's not waiting for you in that room to like to to like you know come at you in any kind of way scold you, know, you, scold you or like 10 minutes late right right <laughs> you know or hey you haven't been here in weeks like where yeah. have you been kind of yeah. thing it's not that at all yeah and yeah so anyway, absolutely anybody have anything to add to that i would say from that um it can also be a thing of just like like there's a thing of you know going into your inner room and there's different there's different ways that we, like different people communicate or just how they interact with god in their secret yeah. place Fellowship like and, and yeah. sometimes i think we default to if i didn't read the scriptures or mm-hmm. i didn't pray or what or just whatever mm-hmm. it looks like then i didn't really commune with god rather than letting him like you saying coming in under that sonship of letting him lead that relationship of hey i'm just spending time with father whether it be on a walk down the mm-hmm. driveway whether yeah. it be i'm in my car i'm listening to worship music i'm feeling the holy spirit on on, yeah. on this song and yeah. now i'm experiencing the living god and yep. just knowing what's the deposit inside of me and letting yeah. that that well up within me yeah and then just letting that out that's communion with god when yep. we when we default back to tradition of okay well i have to read these scriptures or when right, i come correct. into a gathering i have to have well, oh what you know they're going to ask me what what was I reading this week or whatever yeah. like that? No, that's not the that's not the thing. It's like, no. did you get transformed by the living God this week? Are you, are you becoming more and more like Him? Correct. Are, you know, Second Corinthians says we're getting transformed glory yeah. to glory. So there's yeah. a, there's a noticeable transformation that we should be experiencing day by day. Yep. And it doesn't have to look a certain way of like, yeah. oh, well, I found this scripture in you know, this week and it really, and it could look that way, but I'm saying it doesn't have to just so that you can be known by men. Mm-hmm. That's what it says here. It says, beware of practicing, but before righteousness Correct. before men, yeah, so, so that good. you may 
you know, receive the reward there. Yeah. It's not about receiving what they have to say. Oh, that's a good word. That's that's cool. Yeah. But did I encounter Jesus? Did yeah, I really right. see him? Did I experience him? Am I becoming more like him? Is the sanctification happening in my life? And is he really, am I really experiencing him in that place? I Absolutely. think that's the biggest question as far as, you know, we need to be asking ourselves, not beating over our, beating ourselves over the head when we don't get to a certain place or mm -hmm. it's not looking a certain way. Right. Yeah. It's a thing of, did I encounter Jesus? Am I walking in the spirit with him? Yeah. And Absolutely. if that, the question, if the question is answered, yes, then you are doing secret place, right? You are communing with God. Correct. That's, that's right. And that's, that's, right. that's period. That's, that's the, that's the whole thing behind secret places. Are you communing with God? That's yeah. right. Cause that's where you're, that's abiding in him. That's yeah. literally yeah. experiencing him. So you may become more like him. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's all. Yeah. I don't think that, I don't think that <clears throat> I'm what, so not that a closet or a, in a room is bad, right? Like yeah. it's it's just the heart posture and the mentality, that mindset of what I'm going in there for, what I'm what I'm doing it for. If it's to check a box, yeah. right? To say I read this scripture, I went there just to yeah. make myself feel better. That that just perpetuates this works based mentality, yeah. and I'm never going to leave there satisfied, right? I'm well, never going to get out of that. I'm never because it like like Sam was saying, it's there's transformation that happens. There's an experiential thing that takes place, and it even says that too, right? When you pray, don't pray like the Gentiles do, and and with a bunch of rep rep repetitious, you know, words. So they um, think they'll be heard for their many words. Right. So they're thinking their works will make that's them that's right. Heard. So it's this works yeah. thing of going into this place and trying to like earn something that's been freely given. Well, I would say what you're saying there is the point of the secret place is to be alone with God. That's exactly right. The, that's not, it's not to have like, hey, do you have the closet in your house? No, he's yeah. basically saying, get alone with God. That's right. It's that's you right. and God. There's no one else here. There's no other agenda. You're not trying to put a, some kind of a pseudo spiritual That's mask right. on you're face to face with God and you look through the, mm -hmm. the entire Bible, the men that walk with God. I mean, you start in the beginning, it says Enoch walked with God, That's right? Right. He walked with him. He was God's friend. Abraham is called the friend Adam, of God. Adam and Eve. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're walking in the cool him. of the That's day. Right. And, and when G, when God comes in the garden, he's saying, where are you? That's right. There's fellowship has been hindered. That's right. Something's hindered fellowship. And so that's really the point. And I think it's a great we can easily get that tripped up in our mind to now we're simply working. Have I checked the right box because this is all the right things I should do versus have I met with the Lord? Yep. yep. I had that private intimacy. So you have something, Wayne, on that? Well, I, I think, too, uh, a lot of times, you know, when you get by on with God, you um, sometimes you feel the goosebumps, you feel good, you feel like you hear from God, and sometimes you may not. And that's and it's always a step of faith. It's always like, you know what, he's there where I feel anything my flesh should not. He's that's right. there. That's right. And, uh, you know, even if you maybe don't get the time you want is, you know, don't get condemned. He's there. All the time, yeah, yeah, you know, that's like, right. And like y'all were saying earlier, you can always talk with him all the time. He, yeah. he's right there. He's, yeah. you know, uh, everywhere we go. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, just to say that, right? Like driving in the car, right? Yeah. So it's not this. This place is not secluded to an inner room in your home, right? It's, I mean, it's just what what we've all been saying that communion with him. And I think that's the other piece of the that like that other piece when I was when I was meeting with this person, is that. Just un that understanding of if I'm always seeking communion, if I'm drawing near, yeah, um, this language that the Bible you see in the Bible, if this awareness of the Holy Spirit throughout my day, yeah, I'm in communion with the Lord, right? Yeah. How many times have we been? I mean, golly, there was testimony after testimony yesterday. You know, Ben, you had a, a, a you know several yesterday, right? Several yeah. encounters yesterday, yeah. but that yeah. just comes from being in communion. Correct. Like you were aware. Yeah. You could have just been at the grocery store doing your thing, yeah. but because you were aware, yep. something happened. That's right. You could have been, um, you know, doing your thing and just had, enjoying your family, picking strawberries, but because of being in communion and being aware, God came yep. and there was an encounter. There was a, 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 a an invasion that took place where heaven invaded earth for a moment yep. and someone got to encounter God that, that, that yeah. otherwise they wouldn't have. And so that's the fruit of that, Correct. but that's something that you can be in all the time, yep. all the time, every day, through all, throughout your day. It's not just this place of, of, you know, me being by myself in a room locked behind the door. Like I can always be in, in that communion, in that place. Now, there, yes, you do want to do that. You do want to get away. And sometimes that's the only place you can go. Yep. Um, 
but yeah, I think I think it's just that that drawing near, that constant communion throughout your entire day, making the most of all these little opportunities. Yeah. Because when I'm aware of him, I'm aware of the opportunities. If I'm not aware of him, I'm not aware that, oh, well, I'm sitting here by myself at my desk at work, or I'm in my car, right? I'm thinking about things throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. I've got a 30-minute drive home, right? Why can't that be a piece of, of my secret place that I can spend with the Lord and just, you know, just be with him while I'm by myself? We, and see, so, we see that with Jesus here in Mark 30, uh, 135 here. You know, even before that, 32, 33, and 34, he says he healed all the people that were sick, who had diseases, casted out many demons, and different things like that. But in 35, he shifts it into, and in the early morning, while it was still dark, he arose and went and departed to a lonely place, and he was praying there. Yeah. yeah. So it was this place of, I'm doing what the Father's telling me to do. I'm healing the sick, casting out demons, yeah. preaching the gospel, but I need to be in communion with him. If I'm in communion with him, I can see him rightly. I can hear him rightly. And so the things that, you know, like when Jesus, you know, spit on the, I mean, spit on that man's eyes, it totally looks counter cultural to what we would do. But it's like, what is father doing right now? Yeah, I only do what I see my father doing. Yeah, exactly. And he became just like us. So if he needed communion with him, how much more do we need communion with the father? Yeah. Because we have to see him rightly and we have to hear him rightly in everyday right. decisions. Yeah. Um, even like when, like I said, we're doing normal day life That's stuff right. and just being attentive to what he's saying and what he's doing in that moment. And then that creates opportunities for people to get touched by the gospel. And that could be a drawing for them, but it always starts with that place of intimacy with the father to yeah. hear him and to know his voice. And when you know his voice, it's that thing of, I know it, so I'm going to go do it. I know when he speaks, yep. so I'm recognizing Absolutely. the voice, and now I'm going to go and actually obey him. That's right. But it comes from that place of being alone with him and recognizing that voice, and then we can go into that place of, okay, now I can preach the gospel here because I know he wants to do that right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you see Jesus. Jesus is, he says that, um, you know, it's good enough for a disciple to become like the master. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus is obviously, he's showing what it looks like. He's showing communion. He's modeling. You know, Jesus is the model. So he's yep. modeling communion. What he's doing is he's modeling connection. Yep. He's staying abiding. And so if the if Jesus, and and I don't want to kind of say have to, I don't want to say have yep. to. That's that, that, that kind of twisted as, as if like, um, there's some kind of like limitation on the Lord. There wasn't a limitation. It was a abiding place that he loved. That's right. It was a abiding place that he became com- right. used to. And, and Jesus, he echoes that in John 15. He says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you'll bear fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So, I mean, obviously we can still walk around and live a life. Absolutely. He's not referencing that. He's saying kingdom fruit is not going to come out of you. Mm-hmm. It's going to come from intimate connection from me. And he models that with what he sees the Father doing. He says, I do nothing but what I see the Father doing. So he's constantly going back to this communion with the mm-hmm. Father, which could be this. And, and I want to I hit this here. Oh, my little alarm went off, sorry. Um, um, I want to hit this because you said something here. You said you kind of touched on this performance thing. And the opening teaching of the Lord Jesus on how to pray is our Father. That's right. So in that phrase alone, I can't call someone my Father if I'm not His Son. That's right. That's good. So if I'm His Son, that means I belong. That's right. That means I'm not here to earn anything. That's I'm right. here to experience Him. Right. I'm here to stay connected. I'm here for friendship. And when I'm here for friendship and I come into my secret place or I come, just when I say secret place, when I come to abide, I come to connect with Jesus, it's only because I love him. It's That's only because right. I want to know him. This is eternal life that they may know him. Mm-hmm. And so I come for that and I come because I'm a son. That's right. And I want to spend time with the Father. And when that's the only motive, then I see rightly. I see That's clearly. Right. I didn't come so that, you know, oh, man, I got a lot going on, so I really need to go pray. It's like, no, I'm already praying. That's right. Like you see this passage in, in, in um, uh, Matthew 17, and um, the, the disciples can't cast the demon out of the man, right? Whole, whole scenario. We won't we'll jump into that. But he, he adds, he, at the end, they say, how come we couldn't cast the demon out? He said, this one comes out by prayer and fasting. But Jesus never prays nor fasts. So what, what, what is, what's going on there? Right. That's true. 
He's basically saying the abiding place. That's You're right. not abiding. There was a lack of abiding, yeah. and those boys switched over into flesh somehow. <laughs> they weren't aware right. of it. Jesus was in the spirit. He, you know, and so th- that place is what's made available. But what you were referencing, Dustin, is so huge. Yep. It must be rooted in the fact that I have been purchased. That's right. I have been purchased. This is this. I am no. I'm not earning anything. Sure. That Meredith's. older. That's right. That old way of the law. Yeah. That's done away with. Mm-hmm. Jesus made a way through his flesh so that uh, us sons can come close to the Father again. Mm-hmm. And it should be, if it's understood rightly, it should be a joy, a joy of communion. That's right. Um, I, I, well, let someone jump in um, uh, Hebrews 4. Yeah, I got it pulled up right here. Yeah, you mind jumping in? I just want to throw that yeah, out. Uh, Hebrews 4, starting in verse 16, it says, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to hope in time of need. Um, and then there's um, going to, to uh, 10, Hebrews yeah. 10, um, starting in 19. Uh, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his faith. And since we have a great high priest... All right, that is his flesh. That's right. Sorry, our faith is what gets us That's in there. Yeah. That's exactly right. That's, right. That's right. His flesh. Thank you for that. And since uh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, yeah. having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope with without wavering, for he who promises who who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate num- uh, one another on to love and good deeds. For forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Yeah, it's so good. So yeah, just kind of, uh, I mean, even more, even more ammo for kind yeah. of what we're talking about here. Yeah. Is you just kind of see that language of just drawing near to Him, and, and why, right? And I, one thing I want to highlight here is this: therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, I think we have to recognize the blood of Jesus. Yep, correct. You can't. You have to understand. That when, you know, you've heard, you know, you've been bought, you've heard we've been purchased, that's through the blood of Jesus. And in order for me to enter in that place with confidence, I have to understand the severity and the weight of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I can understand Jesus and not understand what the cross did. You know what I mean? I can learn and know about Jesus. I can can know about Jesus my whole life and not fully grasp and have that that realness of what the cross accomplished. Correct. And so through that understanding, that revelation yep. of, okay, this is what the cross did here, gives me that confidence. Because I, now I know, right? Once I believe it has that, to do with I, you. it has nothing to do with yeah, me. That's right. Now I can enter in confidently because I know what's been paid for. I know what's been bought. Yeah. I know. So it's, 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 there, it's, that, it's that kind of that fundamental understanding of that. To be able to enter confidently, to be able to enter that place. Mm-hmm. Because if I don't, this is what I'm saying, if I'm not confident in that and I don't understand my sonship, I don't understand what what, yeah. what was purchased, I don't understand what was paid for in that moment, I'm going to go into that place feeling like I have to work for it. At 100%. That's just what it comes yep. down to. I'm going to go into that place trying to earn something that he has already paid for. Correct. Yeah, and go then ahead. you become... What, like the other son, you remember the yeah, prodigal son, son. You become son, the right. other son. Yeah. It's yeah. like become the older brother, and he's like, "Hey, yeah. I'm out in the field. I'm doing all these things for you." Correct. And Correct. he's complaining. He's like, "You didn't give me all this stuff." He's like, "Wait, all I've ever had was you, yours. You just had to ask me." Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he never asked. So yeah. if you <laughs> you have not because you asked not. Yeah. And if we don't know that we have a good father in heaven, we don't know our inheritance through the blood of Jesus. Right. Then we're always going to be in that mentality of lack and yeah. that and mentality of I, I don't know if I can really approach God I don't know like yeah. no this is what's made available mm-hmm. I get to have communion one-on-one time with yeah, Jesus on. every Thank single you, day yeah. I live and abide in that place of I know that he lives inside of me through the po- the deposit of the Holy Spirit and from that place I get transformed yeah and I yeah. get mm-hmm. to actually experience the fullness of God that's what Ephesians talks about yeah. when Paul says that we grow up in the fullness of Christ yeah and that's the fullness of knowing that's the greatest mystery yeah. Christ within you the hope of glory yeah. yeah and once you understand that reality I think that's a pivotal piece in understanding secret places just knowing you're a son knowing what's available yeah and 
not being in a place of lack and knowing your inheritance. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And both of those, um, both of those scriptures, guys, if you read like the therefores, mm. right? Yeah. You got to understand they're, they're there for a reason. So yep, that's right. read, read everything prior to that. That's, that's that's basically kind of like putting the exclamation point on yep, that it. whole that whole prior uh, passage is like therefore enter right mm. therefore let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace because we have why, a merciful why would high I priest do that? because we have a merciful and if you, and if yeah, you go up here it says on. therefore since we have such a great high priest yeah. who has passed come through on. the heavens Jesus the Son of God laid, let us hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness but one who has been tempted in all things as we are and yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near. Why? So because he's so already done on. it. He's he's paved the way. He was the example that we are to follow. And that's what it's saying here. That's why I can go there with confidence because I know that when I look across the table that there's there's a, there was once a real man just like me who walked, was tempted in all things, but was perfect in all things. Yeah. And so because he was the example, because he came, he became just like me. I can now have confidence in that high priest that now speaks better things over me because of because of because of what he did. Yeah. So so good. Just uh, and, and same thing with with ten. It's um. Uh, I mean, yeah. Just it's just reading that and understanding the, the 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 cross, understanding what he paid for, understanding that he you know what he did while he was here, gives me the ability to go into that with confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I would just say um, one more thing I would add to that too is just that. When I read that, it feels like an exciting invitation yeah. mm-hmm. because I have this high priest. I have this merciful high priest. So this is a beautiful, exciting invitation. It's like the good news, right? Yeah, it's, it's totally like good news. news. It sounds like, <laughs> like news. great news. It sounds like great news yeah. that I have someone who's, you know, uh, uh, on my side. That's right. It's not on my side against the Father. That's right. It's praying, you know, that, that for a supernatural empowerment, praying that I can receive grace. Like, there's, they, like they're for us, the Father, exactly and, and they're, right. they're for us, and I get to see that. So it's this invitation, and I think that's just huge. I think even to kind of sum up what the, the beginnings of these teachings from the Lord, and the way that we see Jesus model in, in Mark 3 14 I'll kind of we'll kind of uh, jump in and then we'll jump into some how to mm-hmm. um, kind of how to do this but we see the heartbeat here in 3 14 Jesus prays all night long it says uh, in 3 13 um, he's calling his disciples and um, and it says that he uh, went up on the mountain and summoned those whom he himself wanted which I love that that he wants them That's this right. is not a he wanted us. If you were bought, somebody wanted you. That's identity. That makes me feel I'm called the beloved. That that's my I'm rooted in that. And he appointed 12 so that they would be with him first. I feel like these are in order personally. Yep. Uh, and that he would send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. So abide in me, I in you, and you'll bear fruit. So what's the the main focal point is am I abiding and connected to the Lord? And the outflow of that is going to be fruit, which is sending forth, proclaiming the message. As you hear in secret, you'll proclaim on the housetop. That's what Jesus said, right? What you hear whispered in secret, proclaim on the housetops. That's referencing intimacy with God. Right. That's referencing friendship right. with God. And then all of a sudden we go out. It says that he called us out of darkness to proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, now you are the people of God. So that just stamps it, and then there's that... Now let's go. This is exciting. There's a place where I get to know God and commune and and talk to him. And I think about my own journey. Like somebody told me early on that if you go talk to God, he'll talk back to you. And I just started doing that. And all of a sudden I started hearing him in my in my room Mm -hmm. at night before I went to bed. That altered everything. That's right. When doubts, fears, and things came in on my walk with the Lord and temptations, I was already rooted in the fact that I had began to know this mm-hmm. living God. Mm-hmm. And so how could I betray him? How could I betray our friendship by not following him? That's right. And so just I think just to echo again, this is something that's made available to the saints. Mm-hmm. It's this holy place that is ours, and let's enter in uh, with full assurance That's right. as sons.